Hello, welcome to this quick BigML tutorial. Today we will be conducting a clustering analysis on a dataset containing movies. The first step in starting any BigML project is to go to our dashboard. Here, we will be able to manage all our projects. Once we are in our dashboard, we will want to create a source in BigML. More often than not, sources will be created from local files in your computer. However, BigML does allow for alternative methods, such as using URLs to download a source. In our case, we will want to click Create Source and find the CSV file we will be using from our local computer. Once our source is created, the next step will be to create a BigML dataset. This dataset will be what our clustering algorithm is applied on. When creating a dataset in BigML, we can either use the configured dataset or one-click dataset option. BigML methods often have both a one-click and a configure option. The one-click option is more handy since BigML wisely chooses the parameters for the method, whereas in configure, it's up to the user to choose. If we enter the configured dataset, we can see that we have the option of choosing what percentage sample of the source we will want to use. However, since we want all 100%, which is what BigML recommends, we will instead go to the one-click menu and select one-click dataset. After our dataset has finished processing, BigML shows us each field and some quick statistics. Genre will be our most important field, since it is usual for grouping movies. We can enter the genre word cloud and see what types of genres are in our dataset. Drama and comedy are the two that most instances are associated with. For this workflow, we will not want any instances with missing values. Therefore, we will want to enter the configure menu and select the filter option. BigML allows us to choose any field we want to filter on. The first field that contained missing values was the overview. We have a variety of methods to choose from, however, to our convenience, BigML provides a method that allows us to filter out any instances with missing values. We will then choose the next field, which is genre, and choose the same method as before. Finally, we'll create a new filtered dataset. Once we have finalized the dataset we will be using for our clustering, we will want to go to the configure menu and click cluster. The reason we will be using configure cluster instead of the one click cluster is because we will want to set the number of clusters to 16 since that's a reasonable number to create groups of movies and more importantly we will want to go to the section that will allow us to scale fields. We will want to scale fields because there are more important fields in our dataset like genre. The default scales are set to 1 which are all equal. We will scale the overview by 2 and scale the genre by 3 since the genre is our most important field. Finally, we will click create cluster. Once our clustering algorithm has finished processing, we are presented with a visualization of all our 16 clusters in different sizes and colors. If you go to cluster 0 summary, we can see the number of instances that live in that cluster, 2,888. And if we go to a bigger cluster, we can see the instances are 5,409. Going back to cluster 0 and entering its overview word cloud, you can get a general sense of what this cluster is about. We see that the instances that live in this cluster's overview are mostly made up of words such as documentary, film, and story. These movies are most likely non-fiction. Therefore, we can enter the name editor and change the name of this cluster to nonfiction. If we go to another cluster, cluster 8, and enter the overview word cloud, we see that the instances that live in this cluster's overviews are mostly made up of words about murder. As before, we can change the name and we'll change it to murder. We can also look at the word cloud of the genres and see that they line up with the words from the overviews, which they do. BigML also provides a statistical summary report about the cluster. However, I will not go into this with detail, 
as it may take a long time. But this can be useful if you decide to export and use this cluster for separate projects. A useful method that BigML provides is creating a centroid. Here, we can input the parameters of a movie and see which cluster it would live in and the distance to that cluster's center. If we enter the title as The Life of Jake and type in an overview that sounds like a non-fiction movie, we can see that the cluster it will live in is a non-fiction cluster. However, if we change the wording of the overview, the cluster will change. But since the genre is the most important field, entering documentary will change the cluster back to the non-fiction cluster. The single centroid prediction is a very functional and useful method. A more powerful method is the batch centroid prediction. If we enter the batch centroid option, we can see that we will have to choose a dataset that our batch centroid will need, and it will predict for all the instances in that dataset. We will choose our original dataset that our clustering was performed on. Additionally, if we will want the batch prediction to have a new column describing the distance and movies from the center of the cluster it lives in. Once we have that set, we will eventually click Centroid to predict. When our batch prediction has been completed, we will choose the option of downloading it as a CSV. When we open our CSV on our local computer, we can see that each movie contains the original fields, as well as two extra columns labeling the clusters that a movie lives in, as well as the distance described from before. This dataset can be used for future projects and investigations. One example could be a recommendation system. Since we know the cluster that each movie lives in, given an input movie, we will easily be able to locate it and find the neighbors that are closest to it, since we also know the exact distance of each movie to the center of the cluster. Finding the neighbors of a movie is essentially the movies that will be recommended to a user. This dataset basically organizes the movies in such a way that will speed up search and comparison. And the ideas of this workflow can be generalized for more than just the movie dataset. We have come to the end of this tutorial. Thank you guys for sticking through it all, and I hope this video showed you how to use clustering in an applicable way.